Hello and welcome to this episode of the video show where this episode I'm talking to Matthew Buck from Journalism. I met Matthew at a walking networking event in Winchester and when he said what he did, within one word, I knew what it was. So what he does, he goes around the world, this is such a cool job, and he basically visually note takes at uh, meetings and events. And by visually note takes, I mean he does amazing drawings, interactive drawings that basically note take what's going on at the event such an interesting conversation i love what matthew does have a look at this matthew buck from journalism welcome to the video show thank you so much for coming along um firstly just tell us a little bit about what you do it's very interesting i think well thanks very much uh it's great to be here mark and thanks for uh, inviting us um our business is uh, graphic recording and you can probably see over my shoulder behind the attractively placed lamp um, uh, a uh, vinyl of uh, our, our name journalism. And our specialism and our work is in graphic recording. And that's events like uh, live casts, like we're doing now, or um, webinars, or even podcasts, or actual physical in real life events and capturing the knowledge that is explained there uh, using drawing. So how long have you been doing it for now? Um, it's a good question. As a business, journalism since about 2009, yeah. uh, we didn't actually incorporate for a couple of years. But prior to that, uh, my business has always been in drawing and knowledge exchange, although I was working uh, mainly then in newspapers and media and broadcasters. Yeah, nice. uh, lots of names you would have heard of. The same goes to my fellow director, um, Alex Hughes, who's not here today. Um, but would say very similar things. We've always been a dispersed business and we've always operated a extended team of a network, if you like, of uh, skilled practitioners like ourselves and uh, some writers as well. So we've always been dispersed and hybrid, which are quite common nowadays, particularly post-COVID, but when we started, maybe less so. So when you first started, like, w what did the business look like then How and has it changed over the last... Well, is that 15 years now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a long time now, uh, which, which is a great, uh, a great thing. Um, yeah, it, it's changed a lot um, because fundamentally um, our businesses came together at a time of economic stress, if you like, or mm -hmm. crisis. It, not dissimilarly to the, the life we're living at the moment, um, you know, with the change of government and the election and so forth. Um, it was after the great financial crash 2007, 2008. And the, the rise of the internet, and it really affected the businesses that most of us personally were working in, like newspapers and broadcasters. So, um, and they decided that in their wisdom, they would give away their content for free, um, which was a lovely idea in many ways, but it had an effect on people who uh, worked in them and for them. And we didn't know what to do. It was a real crisis. Um, but what we found was that instead of people thinking about an object, i.e., I will make a podcast or I will make a drawing or I'll make a video. Um, people start to think about the process of doing it. And in the way that you're doing now, while you're, you're asking me questions and I'm talking too much in reply, it's, it's, uh, that was a real revelation. And we found that actually people really wanted to see the guts of us working and particularly working with them collaboratively, co-working there are lots of words you could apply to it but particularly when you're working in a dynamic environment where there's a lot of flux or change uh, graphic recording or sketch noting or whatever you'd like to call it of course we call it journalism have for years uh, becomes very very powerful because it helps articulate points where people do agree do understand or don't and um, helps synthesize, that's one of the key skills here, um, uh, you know, paths forward or start, starts to sketch out literally paths forward. And uh, we've found it incredibly powerful for many years now. I'm always really impressed by like the speed and the quality of it, that you draw with as well and keep up with like what's going on um, like in the room. Like if you're at, an, at the actual event, I think I, I'm just blown away by how good it is and how quickly you're doing it <laughs> well, well thank you it's it, it's an amazing thing and um we, we we are we are reflecting in the same way that ai is doing now and has 
done for many years. Um, the speed and the wit of the, the other people who are participating in whatever process and whatever way it is, whether it's a huge conference with plenary speakers, tiny workshops, very intimate group. I was at a networking session this morning in, in my hometown of Winchester, not very far from, from Andover, uh, where you're based. Um, and we had about 35 in the room, but very rich conversations and a lot of um, agile and dynamic things. And one of the greatest things about drawing in whatever form you call it or do it is it's one of the original agile technologies for recording information. Some people call it visual note taking, fine by us. It, it, but what it does do is it allows you then to gather that, reapply it in ways that become more useful in slow time rather than that speed time that you were talking about. I always find it interesting, like the kind of things you're drawing as well. So it might not might not directly relate to what someone's saying, but it's kind of like uh, an, an imaginative way of helping people remember like what what's been said in the room. How, like, how, how, do you have to be like pretty creative to come up with that, or does it just sort of naturally come to you? Um, that's a really interesting area because um, very often one of the most valuable things that having a um, a third party in a in a room in an environment uh, it works rather like um facilitation uh because you're uh, able to surface some of those subtexts uh often things that aren't quite articulated they're implied um or delivered in code effectively and some of our most powerful and useful work frankly has I think has been in areas where there is absolutely obvious conflict, but it's not been able to be articulated until it's appeared in a drawing. Mm. So when you use a word like creativity, people think that means making something up often. It's not really. It's um, there's, there's a translation, I think interpretation. Yeah. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Nice. I think uh, often are helpful words. So you don't always have to be in the room to do what you do. Like how, do, how does it actually work then? No, and, and it would be very similar to what you're doing now with a video show. Uh, so perhaps um, we were attending a conference in Singapore um, a fortnight ago, um, and this was from NGOs all around the world. They've been on a long, extended learning um, process through a, through a partner organisation for over six months, and everything's been online, and it culminated in Singapore. And we, we just dropped in for a couple of the sessions, maybe a morning, maybe an afternoon, and just captured the quality of the conversation. All it's necessary is, you know, like you're doing yourself with, with your setup that everyone can see, uh, is, is planning, preparation around how, in our case, the audio, which is the most important thing, we often don't need to see. Um, but what we do need to do is hear. Mm. And... Um, that's probably one of the most important things. If we're planning a practical live session, some something coming up this autumn in um, Oxford for one of the universities around the vaccine group uh, out of Oxford University, very important in COVID times. We are having a little issue at the moment because the, we know where the venue of the event is going to be, but there's no particular, particularly good space from in which to work. Okay. Um, so that's going to be a challenge, but we'll resolve it. So how much like space do you need in the room like that you're in then? I'm guessing you need quite a bit or are you flexible? It's a really good question. If I'd have thought, I would have put up um, uh, a, a, a stand, a tripod, um, if you like, for carrying paper, because that was um, very much how we used to do it. It would have also had the benefit of covering up those attractive looking crates in the background. I but, like, I like um, the crates. The crates are, <laughs> I think the crates are cool. Thank you. <laughs> Um, but, uh, so we would have taken up more room if we were doing that pens, paper, paraphernalia, you, you just need some. And of course, moving it around is an issue transportation. Nowadays, when we go to an event, we tend to work digitally. And so it's more a question of just hooking us up to a monitor, a series of monitors or not, depending on whether you want something discreet, quiet capture or, or public capture. Mm. So with the digital one, I'm guessing you can like zoom right into stuff and like it could be absolutely massive and you can scale right 
up and right down. It, it's a, it's a wonderful thing. It's mm. it's a bit like a, a yes mild alternative to the distribution network that you're applying, and um, yeah, it 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 can be quite intense. So you have to be quite careful about how you deploy it in a in an events environment. Um, if it's just behind the speakers, if it was going on behind me now, it would be too much. If it's you know to the side, um, people can dip in and out. Yeah. Often you find the mixing areas where a lot of the actual learning is done and exchange a really powerful space for it yeah nice um so who's who's a good contact for you then like what what kind of because you said you you traveled all over you've mentioned oxford you mentioned singapore i know when i met you you'd got back from i want to say luxembourg i think you're right yeah, yeah. it was luxembourg yeah yes yeah, so, um what, what's a good connection for you it's it's um that's a really difficult question to answer personally <laughs> yeah, because sorry. we yeah no, it's a really good one we um when we started some of our very first work was um with people and particularly people who were working cross border so you would have nations within the european union and they have challenges posed by their own borders and this is something that we've all lived through in the last 10 years um you know with with the eu referendum and brexit mm-hmm. That was really important, and we're still working with them. We had set up a company outside the UK to main, maintain that relationship, those series of relationships. Um, so, you know, business comes at you fast. So, but if I was going to give you an example, I would say it's something like that. It's actually about boundary crossing and the exchange of knowledge. Um, so any organisation that's ever had a problem around uh, communication either internally or externally, um, are, are probably going to benefit from working with people like ourselves or ourselves. Mm-hmm. And um, that's been a real revelation, how common uh, a lot of the problems that we've seen in our 10 or 15 years have been. But it's a way of getting all your thoughts out and then ah, oh, you can visually actually look at it and then analyse it and decipher it and like work out what, to do next um whereas if it was just sort of audio recorded it would be like you have to go you have to like edit or video recorded you have to edit that down and then make a video out of it but like it's like oh look it's right there i can look right at it and there's a really interesting thing that and you're doing it too because i've got you waving your hands around so Mm. sorry about that mark (laughs) (laughs) the the, you know the, the the design concept of you're going that way and you want to be able to zoom out and then bring it back together and probably do the same again. And and that is is profound. It's a very old concept in design. Um, and, and I think your parallel or your discussion there around video and, and things like it are very interesting because it gets more fixed. Yeah. And um, this maintains some degree of agility. And some of the assets that I'll, I'll share with you subsequently, you know, you've seen um, that there'll be an element of that in it. Yes, so, so yeah. I to- totally get like the, you said about companies that have had communication problems, whether that's internally or externally. I think, yeah, it's a really good way of working through it. Um, I, I think um, one of the hardest things to do in communications, and I, I'm supposedly and have been for many years a uh, communications professional, I find it almost, you know, incredibly difficult. You know, one of the sessions this morning, a, a particular event I was at, um, was around content creation and where to use it, how to use it, why to use it. And you never stop learning it because it changes all the time, which is what makes it so tiring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you? Yep. Uh, the best way is simply to look for um, at journalism. Um, uh, we are an at journalism on uh, X Twitter, as it's known. Uh, yeah. We always used to be uh, heavy, very heavy users. We're still there. Uh, LinkedIn is a great place to get us. Again, journalism will find you there. You find my colleague, uh, journalism Alex, or myself, journalism Matt. Cool. I'm, I'm still finding it hard to get my head around that Twitter is called X now. Uh, me too. I don't like it. <laughs> no, I'm just going to no, call it Twitter either. forever. Um, yeah cool well thank you so much for coming on the show really appreciate it and i'll put all your details in the um description it'll be on screen as well so people can see it and yeah i do urge people to get in touch yeah well that's terrific mark thank 
thanks very much. I'm glad it was uh, sounded good, and I'll uh, make sure you've got that brief email with a downloadable package of stuff to do with as you will. Cool. Thank you very much. So thank you, Matthew, for coming on to the show. Really do appreciate it. Don't forget to get in touch with Matthew if you think that he can help you at your next event. I think it'd be very interesting to get him along. Um, if you've got any questions for future episodes of the show, put them in the comments below, and I'll see you next time in the next episode of The Video Show. Goodbye.